As commodity markets come under pressure, one mineral is bucking the trend. Lithium, rare earth minerals under the guidance of CEO Kira Mazzoria, is pushing ahead with its target of a spread of assets at various stages of progress. It's got wide interest in lithium, including a 17% interest in Bacanora Minerals, which delivered its PFS to investors at its Mexico project just last week. Kira Mazzoria joins us now uh, with some more of what's happening at Rare Earth Minerals. Uh, we spoke to you just over a year ago. Before we take a look at what progress the company's made, we spoke then about the dynamic of lithium, the demand and supply in the market. You were saying then about the fact that there was undersupply. How have things changed? I think that paradigm still exists, um, and I think it's more uh, it's been more exacerbated by uh, the possibility of grid storage. And we can see that with grid storage, you know, in terms of uh, storage capacity, we're talking, you know, in America they produce about 1,000 gigawatt hours of power, and yet the grid storage is a fraction of that, 0.1 gigawatt hours. So we still see that dy dynamic, and that's just uh, simply based on the EV market and the uptake of portable electronics. So we still see a dynamic where we're talking from battery capacity going from around 45 gigawatt hours uh, currently in place to 175 giga gigawatt hours in uh, 2025, which translates to about, in terms of a total uh, lithium consumption, of which uh, batteries represents about 40%, about 180,000, still looking at the 400,000 tonnes per annum of lithium carbon equivalent required. Um, and they're fundamentally, certainly we can't see uh, where that supply increase is going to come from. There are a few projects coming along and it's false to the juniors in the market, uh, such as the Sonora Lithium project and the Cinevec project um, and Ora Cobre, which has obviously just come out with some uh, figures in terms of its production, to fill that gap because even the majors are finding it hard to secure the resources at the right cost structure to fill those gaps. Mm. Um, you're moving ahead, as I said, you own a number of different projects along, along the various um, uh, the, the pipeline of, of, of development. Mm. Um, you just raised three and a half million pounds to move into other projects. First of all, the raising. Um, how do you? How difficult was it to sell to investors? Because you, you've, you've done a bit of dilution there. Is what happened to yeah, you? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, the overall dilution was a, a net effect of about 8.73% uh, of of the enlarged share capital. I think uh, it, it was relatively relatively difficult, and I think certainly you know you went to commodity commodity traditional commodity players, and they just went no, sorry, not interested. I think we had to go slightly outside the box and 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 talk to energy players, and so we were able to raise the money. Um, we believe we'll be able to apply that money, and it's not an untypical discount, um, but we were able to raise that money and uh, we'll apply that money and already have applied that money and already that into the Cinevec, which has shown a 30% growth since we applied that money. So we believe that we've got uh, an understanding of the market and assets to invest appropriately and deliver in assets that will hopefully deliver superior returns. That, that, that Cinevec uh, involvement, I think you, you bought into a company called European... Metals, Metals salt, Holdings, yeah. haven't you, which is an Australian listed yeah. company. And it cost about, what, six, seven hundred thousand pounds? Yes, that extra that five, that uh, extra four or five percent cost uh, uh, six hundred thousand pousand yeah. to maintain. So we're at 19.9 percent, 19.8 percent. It is a large deposit, same cost, well, lower cost structure, in fact, than Sonora. Uh, the scoping strategy shows about 1,000. Is that because it's in the Czech Republic uh, as opposed to Mexico, or is it because it's a different um, it's mining? It's, um, it's, it's application. A, it's, it's not, it's not, um, our, our, we always look at the deposit itself because uh, mining applications and technologies can be replicated around the world and those efficiencies can be gained just by replicating it. We look at fundamentally the deposit. So the Cinevec deposit has an advantage because it obviously has lithium carbonate and then it has a, it has a credit in terms of tin and tungsten and some possibly uh, other potash credits. So those credits built into it, uh, well actually excluding the tin and uh, tungsten, is about $1,500 a tonne cost for lithium carbonate. Now, when you look at others around there, the cheapest out there are brines around 2000 2100 So it is a very cheap, low-cost cost, cost quartile p uh, potential producer. Now, we'll see as they go through the PFS, which is that's one thing they're going to try and achieve this year. Um, and uh, we, as active shareholders, will help them achieve that and ensure that they do. Lithium is about, what, $6,000 yeah, a tonne at the moment, I think, so yeah. that, that, that gives us some sort of context on that. Um, what are you going to do with the rest of the money? Because uh, you've just uh, explained away um, a, a small proportion of the mm. 3.5 million. Mm. Uh, what else have you got your eye on? 
Well, um, there will be obviously contributions that we would have to make to the uh, definitive fe feasibility study because not only are so, Bacchanal is funded in terms of equity funding, but we also have a JV um, and we'll need to contribute into that JV um, on the Fleurel Swers, Swers deposits. So part of that money will go to there. We have Yangabana coming up and Yangabana is a rare earth minerals deposit, less out of lithium, but that has... Uh, uh, going to complete its PF PFS by the end of this quarter or so it's announced. Um, so we will need to decide, because that's a free carry, do we contribute to the bankable feasibility study? Then we'll always keep our eye out for assets. Um, I think some assets uh, are slightly overpriced and we're seeing that some in some assets in Australia. Um, but uh, we look out for value and as I said, we, look, we take a strategic approach. Can, we, can this asset, is that scalable? Has it got scale and scalability? And can, does it have a cost structure that is unique, i.e. it's not a technology, it is about the resource itself? Where do you go from now? Because talking about Bacanora, the feasibility study coming up, uh, they've got long-term plans to be involved in full production. Presumably you'll want to have part of that production rather than sell it out. Mm. Um, you've got to contribute to that uh, mine plan. It's going to cost a lot of money. They mm. were talking to us just last week about um, potential costs in getting the whole thing moving. How do you go about raising that sort of money in this sort of market? Because it's tough out there. Yeah, um, and as I said, in the, in the commodity sector it has been. But I think for the right project, right margins, you know, you've got EBITDAs of whatever, 100 and, I think it was $150 million a year. Um, oh, sorry, 100, yes, $150 million a year. Um, you will be able to get the right debt uh, funding and stroke equity. It's going to be a it would have to be a traditional funding in terms of that manner. So it'll be once they get to the definitive feasibility study, there'll be some equity raised probably and uh, a debt associated against the project. And that's how you would see this typically progressing for something like Cinevec as well. Again, we would hope to see si similar EBITDAs um, and once it gets to that stage, it will be funded that way. And so we would have to contribute if we wanted to retain our 17%. Uh, contribute into the equity portion and if we wanted to uh, retain our JV interest contribute uh, there as well so we, yes we would have to contribute to get that but then one would hope to as a result of that get 17% of the net present value of 776 million dollars yeah um, when we spoke uh, just over a year ago you were then talking about what has just come to pass this PFS mm -hmm. at, uh, at Bacanora you've increased your, your stake in that um, where are you going to be in another year's time let's 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 weave that into a comment about the share price mm -hmm. as well if we can as to what's happening uh, within the within the business and how you see that rolling mm -hmm. out because it all goes to part of the argument about the investment case at mm -hmm. what 40 million pounds where you are at the mm -hmm. moment uh, and what do you say to investors about where the company's going and how and how things are going to unfold well um, the Sonora Lithium project has got a very clear strategy of how it's going to develop um, and and that is a process of um, effectively going Taking, doing all the technical studies, the offtake, additional offtake agreements, all the way out to the DFS at the end of uh, early, sorry, end of early next, early next year. Um, we also so we, we uh, associated with that you have certainty. You have certainty from a 25% certainty to a 10% certainty in, in that. So in a year's time, we would have the DFS out um, back and all, back and all, and the project will be going through some uh, funding in relation to that. Uh, one would assume, and then the Cinevec project would have hopefully gone and delivered its PFS. So we would then have another economic driver of saying, well, okay, what, what is this stake worth and, and how are we going to develop that? And we see these, these projects jointly filling the gaps in, in, in the demand. Um, you know, uh, and we would then hopefully see appreciation, our value and our share price. It's been quite a quite a wild ride, hasn't yes. it, for those for those investors in the stock? But if you take a long term picture, there could clearly be a line drawn. How difficult it is is it at the moment as a CEO to, to deal with all these wild rides? Uh, I, I think we are volatile, more volatile than most, and and I, I would hasten to say that if you look at our volatility, we you know we we have about I think about average about two hundred thousand pounds, three hundred thousand pounds traded every day. Uh, well, we look at. Who we've endeavoured. There's a lot of retail interest. Retail because, interest, yeah. yes, and, and and sometimes we'll we'll, we'll have a uh, a market where the people are shorting or, or taking long positions. And but overall, if we look at where we've how we've started, you know, we started two years ago, um, well, even, well, more than two and a half years ago, and I think our market capitalisation was on the two to four million pound mark. We've um, we've gone from that value to 41 million over that period of time, um, and that's 
driven because we have this uh, growth story within the lithium market and we've picked assets that have growth within them in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of getting towards production. So we need, need to somehow to also look at how to replicate that again um, and that's why we've gone into the Sinovec project because we can see a similar story evolving, a similar a set of economics evolving um, and hopefully similar returns evolving. Well, look, we uh, look forward to speaking to you again in a year's time, see where things are moving up. But, Kieran, thanks indeed uh, Thank you. For, for joining us. That's Kieran Mazzaria. He is the chief executive of Rare Earth Minerals.